the retail guys, when they sell a share, can't get the silver. It's not like people are selling their SLV to get the silver. Okay. They may be selling because silver is not at a great price. But when you destroy shares and you still have X demand, you would expect the price to go up, not down. Lately, we've been having a, fall, a, a falling SLV share price. I want to explain, I think, what's going on. Because not only we're having falling um, SLV price, but actually the shares are being liquidated and silver is being pulled out of the fund. I'll show you that. Silver squeeze really started at the end of January, beginning of February last year. And that's when uh, people went into SLV and were bidding up SLV because they want to try and squeeze silver. 110 million ounces of what was in the London market, because that's where most SLV silver is stored. Not all of it. Some is stored in New York, but I think about three quarters or so from looking at the documents uh, on SLV are stored in London. And so what happened was 110 million ounces over those three days, the last two trading days, January the 1st of February, was silver squeeze. People went to SLV and 110 ounces were allocated in London to SLV. And so it got an influx of silver because people were demanding shares. And then we started to see a runoff on the London COMEX markets and SLV selling off uh, after silver squeeze. And I think people generally took this, especially generalists took this to mean, well, SAV selling off, nobody's interested in silver. And that's quite the opposite of what's going on. I've been documenting the runoff of silver stocks on both the COMEX and the London markets, which are the two main repositories for silver, at least industrially, also for uh, investment demand in the Western world. Certainly there are the places you can get it, but they're two big ones. And they're the two biggest stores of millions of ounces of silver, right? Well, there's been a big runoff. We've had, gosh, I want to say, uh, without looking at the numbers, about 70% runoff in silver and COMEX. Don't quote me on that. Go back and look at the numbers. But it's been the majority of it since silver squeeze began, since here. So if that's, a, and also London, recently I've hit up on the channel how London has, has seen a precipitous decline in silver. Of course, if you want to follow London markets, I recommend Ronan Manley, Ronan Manley at Bullion Star, who does that. Excuse me, guys, I've got allergies, so I'm doing my best to make it through this one. But Ronan Manley is a good guy to follow at Bullion Star if you want to follow London market. I follow him and, and several other people that call, uh, cover London market, and I also look at the charts and things as published by LBMA and other sources. And what was funny is all this over has been around. Off. So what's going on? Why is this happening? How can there be such incredible investment and in industrial demand for silver? Remember the last four years, we've been running a silver deficit from a yearly mine supply perspective. The industry is demanding more than the, the mines can put out. So the 2022 would be the fourth year, according to the Silver Institute and Metals Focus, which does the research. If that research is valid, and I have no reason to believe it's not, probably the most comprehensively put together research on that subject that we can find. Um, certainly not without errors, I would imagine, but probably the best data resource. So we know we're in an era of declining above ground silver inventories, declining supply when relatively speaking to demand. And we know the silver deposit is getting harder to find. We know that physical is being drained out of the COMEX. It's also being drained out of SLV. I'm going to show you that here. If you look at the screen, this is the silver ounces held. This is silver squeeze and this is now. And the overall silver ounces held. Um, in uh, London for SLV has fallen from almost 700 million to just under 500 million. So we're talking about 200 million decrease. That means that the authorized participants are redeeming shares, but silver SLV is falling. So everybody wants the fiscal, but silver price is falling. Well, I've talked about comics before. Let's talk about SLV this time. Why does SLV even matter? Why does any of this matter? Well, as I said, a lot of generalists get into this. If you're getting into it through you know, your retirement account or through some sort of fund. This is a passive ETF and you get exposure to silver, but there's some things that I wanted to point out. The price of SLV is expected to lag silver because the expenses are taken out of the fund itself. And so eventually it will have a little bit less performance decremented for the management amount of management fees for the people that are running the trust. And so SLV will never 100% track the price of silver. It's always going to fall behind a little bit. But that's a fairly nominal amount. It's not like we're talking 5 or 10%. It's a lot less than that. It's a normal management fee. So we expect SLV to lag silver price a bit because of that dynamic. But what's happening is we've had a free fall crash from about 27 bucks to somewhere around 1750, whatever it's trading at now. At the same time, silver is being pulled out. Now, usually when shares are redeemed in an equity, that's actually bullish. I'm going to take you to Investopedia. Uh, this is an article on stock buybacks. So uh, are stock buybacks a good thing or not? There's controversy around this, something I've written on Seeking Alpha about it in the past before. But I want to bring you to something that most market participants believe happens when you reduce shares in any equity. 
uh, it generally means a buyback will create a level of support in the stock price. So, for example, what's happened in the last 10 years during this area of easy money is a lot of companies took on debt and did share buybacks at the same time. That put a floor under the price of their share. Why? Because you're destroying shares. Well, if there's X amount of demand and less shares, it means price should go up because there's the same amount of demand for less shares. Okay. Now, if you had issued more shares on top of what you already had without destroying any previous to it, you would think the share price would fall because there's the same amount of investors, but more shares. That's why when you dilute a company by issuing a bunch of shares at once, investors generally don't like it. They do like buybacks if they plan on being in that share for a while because it tends to support the price. So why is this not going on in SLV? We have a redemption in silver here. You can see here, and yet the price is falling. And you would say, well, Rob, that's because there's there's less demand. People are redeeming shares. Sure. But you're also creating less shares in the market. And remember, the retail guys, when they sell a share, can't get the silver. It's not like people are selling their SLV to get the silver. OK, they may be selling because silver's not at a great price. But when you destroy shares and you still have X demand, you would expect the price to go up, not down. So what's happening is SLV is being liquidated right now and the price is going down. Why is that? When you destroy shares in an otherwise equal environment, you know, assuming demand hasn't just cratered, which I don't think it has, because physical demand for the metals is really strong then it, it's counterintuitive that the price should fall. And one of the reasons is because there's this big short position uh, on SLV. And so this uh, site, Fintel, tells us what it is. Right now, the shares are short 59 million uh, sources of New York Stock Exchange, okay, where SLV trades. And 59 million shares short. I've seen this go as high as over 60 million within the last few weeks. And when you have a short interest on a stock, it tends to depress the price. When people are borrowing shares to short it with the expectation of buying them back at a cheaper price later, that's what shorting is, it generally puts a downward price movement or downward price pressure on the stock. I think it's not the redemption into silver by the authorized participants. Remember, the authorized participants are the only ones, sorry, let me get back to the, the document, the only ones that can redeem the shares. It's not the individual shareholders. You have to do it in 50,000 share buckets. It has to be an authorized participant. It's right there in the prospectus. So why, when destroying all those shares over time, this price has been falling when the physical demand for silver is nuts? You would think that investors who want to get access to silver, who are buying everything they can in the open market in terms of ounces, uh, along with the industrial sector, which needs silver, would also be buying up SLV. But I think what's happened is everybody's going after physical. And it's the short uh, position. It's the short position that's causing the price to fall. And it's allowing... It's allowing these authorized participants to go and redeem out all the silver, right? All the silver is coming off. And if you want to look at, you know, what we see here, it's actually been positive over the last four weeks have been more added. There's been a little bit of a positive uh, move in SLV, but over time, you know, it's really fallen. And this positive move is tiny. If you look at it right there, it's basically nothing. So the overall trend is authorized participants taking metal out that should create some additional support for the share price. if. Um, if share prices on SLV traded the same way share prices trade for other market instruments, but we know it's different because you can't, you know, you can't get access to the actual silver itself. And I think what's happening is there's awareness in the market that SLV is not really the right proxy for a lot of silver uh, investors. I think people are going to physical, and I think that's why the physical is coming out. I think that's why um, they're redeeming shares, but I think the price is being held down by the short position because you can call it, uh, you know, short interest. You can call it, uh, you know, vultures coming after SLV because they see a falling price. It's not like SLV's crater, right? It's still at 1750. You know, it, it's probably disingenuous that this many shares are being shorted on it, you know, at this time. It, 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 it's a, it's a ton. Um, and if you look at the off exchange short volume ratio, 45%, I mean, and it's also three days to cover. So you need three days of all SLV trading to, to cover these 59 million shares. That's a lot. So this ratio of 3.11 days to cover shorts is really huge for any equity. It does, you know, that's essentially what's happening. What I'm telling you is happening is 
They're liquidating silver off SLV. The short interest is keeping the price down so the market doesn't notice. So SLV doesn't explode and cause passive investors to say, hey, wait, silver is doing something. I think what's happening is it's been intentionally shorted so that authorized participants can take the metal. Because I think there's there we have a silver shortage. People need the metal. They're going to get it wherever they can. They know only the authorized participants, by the way, SLV has been set up, can redeem the baskets of shares for the metal. So they redeem, they buy their shares, they with the short position, keep the share price down, so they get them cheap. They recycle the shares by redeeming them, and they take the silver. Now, where does that silver come from? If you're 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 a client and you buy fifty thousand shares of SLV, you're a group of clients that have bought fifty thousand shares, and you want the silver, you go to one of these authorized participants, JP Morgan or or any of the ones that do it, and you say, "Go buy me a bunch of shares." And oh, we've got up to fifty thousand as a group or singly. We want to redeem these authorized participant redeems it. That's how you get your silver. So maybe they're going to Comex and they're not getting delivery of what they want because we've shown on our videos how hard it is to get it off of Comex. We have this four year running mine supply deficit. The mines can't make enough. So you could try to go do a contract with the mine and definitely do it. But it, you're, not everybody's going to be able to do that, right? But, but the supply chain is short silver. So what's happening is this short position on silver is keeping that price down on SLV. For the short on SLV, while they redeem the the silver out, okay, but nobody really knows because it's counterintuitive. Because usually, when you destroy shares, prices go up. That's the general expectation of most equities. It's not happening on SLV, and I think that's what's happening. So there's a run on SLV going. That's why I did this video. It's, I think it's pretty obvious when you look at the data, and that's just another confirming factor showing us that hey, people want physical silver. So if you're following along with the derivative market uh, created price for silver, it's 17, 18 bucks, whatever it is right now. I'm not even looking at the chart this morning. It, I don't pay too much attention to that other than I kind of have to to follow the industry, but I don't pay attention to that from a supply demand perspective because it had nothing to do with the fiscal market. And you see what happens when another equity in the space, which has a correlation to the derivative market, is being shorted so that, that shares can come off. And then you see the futures being shorted and uh, people stand for delivering, taking the silver off. <clears throat> you can see there's a liquidation. There's liquidation in silver everywhere. So this basically video is put out basically to say there is a shortage condition brewing in silver. Silver squeeze, ne silver squeeze never stops.